Hello everyone, it's Officer Dan and the Aussies coming at you with another world class how to. Today we'll be blessing your eyes and ears with our GR, GT86, BRZ, and FRS adjustable strut tops. Yes, for the soldiers that have stuck with us through thick and thin, this is the last installment of the kinda sorta, probably maybe keep it on the DL, but not really kinda sorta super lock angle kit series. Which sucks, cause I can't believe it's over already. Where did the time go? If you're new here, feel free to have a squeeze over the other videos and if you have well let's carry on without crying please now in typical GKness we like to show you what it is we're installing before we actually install it so now that your eyes have been penetrated with said visual ask your brain if it also wants to get penetrated with all the goodness that the fine minds at GK have pumped into this lovely piece of machinery you just need to hop over to our product page to do so it's updated as often as the weather and has all the tidbits for you to relay to your partner so that you can actually sound like you know what you're talking about and she can look bored as Anyway, <clears throat> let's head to the cold garage where we will unveil the small little beast we'll be working on. As you can see, our 8.6 has quite some camber already, so let's go ahead and see what we can do with these strut tops. After popping the lightest hood in all the universe, you will stumble upon a clear focus of the strut tops. And what even are those dirty red and dusty simply not GK tops? Ew. And the first step is going to be while the car is on the ground, loosening the top nuts so they're easier to take off whilst the car is lifted. Speaking of lifted, lift your whip up onto the hoist if you're upper class, or pump your jack if you're middle class, or drive up on to a curb if you're in that low class zone and get that little 8.6 up into the air. Zap off whichever marketplace wheels you found on the cheap and get them out of the way. First step is going to be to loosen and remove the bolt that secures the brake line to the coilover. Get your pointy nose pliers out and loosen that clip from behind, getting that off our coilover base. Now head over to the knuckle and loosen and remove the bolt securing the sensor to the knuck, whipping the bolt, sensor, and wiring out of harm's way for now. Head over to the strut bolts themselves, secure from one side, and loosen and remove the nuts from the other. Now being that our whip is airborne, these bolts will be loaded, so if you have the means to get a trans jack and pump that up to lift the brakes up to unload said bolts, that will allow them to come out nice and easy without ruining the threads. Drop the trans jack and knuckle out of the way, leaving your coilover dangling for dear life. Now lucky for you, because you're paying attention and you've already loosened the top nuts, this will be an easy step. So grab the coilover like it owes you money with one hand, pop it up, loosen and remove the top nuts with the other, which allows you to finally remove that coilover from the car. Yeehaw! Get the coilover on the bench and provided the spring holding your coilover is not under tension, which is pro tip, definitely worth checking first, especially if you don't have health insurance. And if it is under tension, just go ahead and wind the spring adjusters down. If it isn't under tension, go ahead and zap the top nut off. You can pull that plate off and save it for a rainy day. Now, with that being removed, the absolute first thing you want to check before starting any of this process is to see if your coilovers are compatible. Now, if your brand of coilover is listed on the confirmed list, you could just skip this part. Now, if your eBay dumpster fire slash Kia coilover wasn't on our list, then what you can do before ordering is get your favorite measuring device from your bedroom and measure the threaded part of the coilover shaft based on the assembly guide off the product page of the website, which is the most responsible thing to do. If you couldn't help yourself and you just had to order them and have them in your hands, well this is how you'd check. First step in general automotive hygiene after removing your top is to clean that ish out. Now if you want to go ahead and look through the handy accessories we have gifted you, you will see two different sizes of lower spacers and upper threaded nuts. The first thing you want to do is check the lower spacers. If the smaller size fits, then Bob's your uncle and use that one. Otherwise, if it doesn't fit and Bob isn't your uncle after all, you're going to need that bigger size we offer. The next thing up is to check on the threaded nuts, which are either M12 or M14 and can be checked by simply screwing them on to see if they work or not. After praying to the eBay gods that your set matches a popular brand and with your fingers and toes crossed, and if the threaded nut winds on and the inserts fit over your shaft without minimal play, you're in business, pal. Go eBay. Now that you know your tops are compatible and we can commit to the rest of the install. Now after taking your old strut top off, the first thing you'll notice is there's a height difference. In our case, the old coilover top measures in at around 15 millimeters from the top of the hat base, compared to the GK Tech being one at 35 millimeters measuring in the same fashion. So in this case, there'd be around a 20 millimeter difference, and the reason we're measuring this is so that we can adjust the coilover height to the difference of the height of the strut top added. Simple maths, my guys. 
Being that there is a height difference now would be the best time to adjust your coilovers to suit by winding the base up, which is 20 millimeters in our case, so that your whip will be at the same height that it was before you started this wonderful journey. Now obviously your height will be different and you do need to measure on your own. This is just based off of our coilover setup. Now that your height is set back to what it was in anticipation for these tops to go on, and now that everyone's on the same page who can fit the tops or not, go back to the coilover, throw the insert in the bottom and the main plate on top, then lastly the nut to suit. Then go ahead and tighten the top nut down to the specs shown right here on the screen. Now just like an old man with some new balances on who'd kick a tire to make sure she's good to go, go ahead and shuffle that top plate around like you're panning for gold just to make sure there's no issues. Look at all that room for activities. If it articulates itself better than my smooth vokes, then you, sir, are good to go. Now head on over and throw the coilover into its home, tossing those main bolts through the bracket's guts, then winding the respective nuts on as well. Go ahead and tighten and torque the main bolts to the specs shown on the screen, then throw the brake line back in its home, winding down the bolt and popping that clip in, then swing around and throw said sensor back in its home, also winding down that bolt to suit. Tighten that down to the specs shown here on the screen, and while you are there, whip around and tighten the brake line bolt to the specs shown on the screen as well. Now all that's left to continue is to pump up the jam, lifting the suspension up to the top, which conveniently segues and allows us to finally dive into the one and only adjustment segment for all of you that are on the edge of your seats dying to know how. Whilst you're lining up the strut top holes, throw the bolts through from the bottom and wind the nuts on the top. Now if you didn't notice, we sneak adjustment everywhere. The bolts that secure the plate to the chassis also have adjustment, and we'll get to tightening those in just a moment. Now most importantly, these plates are not the same, and the main marks here that we're pointing to on your screen must point towards the engine, as you can see with our super obvious reference pointing towards the engine. Now that you can see the marks on the left and right side of what we're pointing to here, when the chassis is aligning to these marks, it would mean that from the strut top, the caster is OEM. Now in addition to that, when the bolt itself is aligned to that same middle mark, that would also indicate OEM camber. So as you can see in our demo, if you wanted more caster, you would slide the plate towards the rear. And if you wanted less caster, you would slide the plate towards the front. Each caster line on the engraving indicates around 0.5 degrees of caster change, which we have managed to squeeze in 0.5 increase to the rear and a 1.0 reduction to the front. Now for the camber, you're simply to move the strut all the way inwards, giving you negative camber. But if you wanted the most amount of camber that these tops can give you, you would need to flip the adjuster. As you can see, it is limiting us here. To do this, go ahead and remove the Allen key bolts and washers, then flip the adjuster as you can see, and you get that little bit more negative negativity in your life, which means the camber angle when measured from the center position to the bearing being flipped can be increased by three degrees. If you were to head for positive camber for some god awful reason, moving the strut tower away from the engine, the same rule applies. Without it flipped, you can get a decent amount as is, but to get the most amount possible, you would need to flip the adjuster and push that ish outwards. That would give you as much as we got, which decreases the camber by 4.7 degrees. If you did this amount of extremism, you would need to slightly trim the opening for the nut and adjuster to clear. But hey, you wanted adjustment, so you got it, big guy. We're happy with ours being smack dab in the middle, and we'll keep it as ordinary as vanilla ice cream, even though some would argue that's not really a flavor. Once you're happy with where yours is, Go ahead and install those Allen key bolts with the washers, then tighten them and torque them down to the specs shown on the screen in a crisscross pattern, aka the Mac Dad will make you jump jump. Anyway, <clears throat> now if you've been following the series and are headed to a pro town setup and or have our knuckles, then these strut tops would allow you to get that necessary adjustment from the top of the coilover, which we cover all the tech information on the knuckle assembly guide with your alignment specs and answers to unlock the universe. And that can be seen floating on your screen as we speak. Provided that you're happy with everything, tighten and torque the main strut top bolts to the specs shown on the screen with the suspension loaded. Remove your favorite pumping device from holding the suspension up and go and throw your wheels back on. Then tighten and torque those lug nuts down for a hashtag not losing a wheel now and not losing it ever again. And now you have only but a monster amount of actual adjustment in your strut top. Congratulations. So it is safe to say we don't think you'll run out of adjustment anytime soon. And now and again as family, we can marvel in yet another freaking awesome install. Great job.
And this ties off the Super Lock Front End series that we've put blood, sweat, tears, and grease through for your liking and or entertainment. We hope to God we see more 8.6s out there having the time of their lives with you guys driving them. Speaking of driving, this is the crew that condenses all this beautiful information into these videos together for your knowledge and entertainment here at GK Tech. Now, if you don't know what you're doing, please reach out to a professional and or contact us with any questions you may have, and we'll be happy to help out. This has been Officer Dan, Johnny Caps, and Didi the K with another of the world's best how-to videos. Peace.